Hello, Gary Vesey with Comtech Advisory with another video interview uh, here in London, in England. And today we have with us uh, Mr. Steve Hughes, who's CEO of Aspect Enterprise. Hello, Steve. Hello, how are you? Very good, thank you. And um, I thought that perhaps what we'd do is we'd start today, since it's almost uh, the end of another financial year, uh, and ask you to you know, give us an idea of what kind of year it's been for Aspect Enterprise so far. Okay. Again, it's been a, a good year for us, likely to be another record year, um, which will be a kind of our sixth or seventh in succession. Um, looking a little below that, um, as you know, we have three revenue lines. One for Aspect CGRM, the trading and risk product, one for Aspect DSC, which is our market data product, and the third line is consulting. And the consulting is wholly associated with the trading and risk um, area. Mm -hmm. So if you look at those three individuals individually, we've seen um, continued good growth in the um, trading and risk area. Market data has remained pretty flat, um, maybe three or four points growth, which we see year on year. Mm -hmm. um, again, that, that area doesn't grow very much and we don't kind of expect it to, but it's important to us strategically. From a consulting standpoint, um, the, the revenues um, year on year have made a, a smaller and smaller contribution to the overall revenues, uh, but that's not because there isn't um, essentially demand for those services. It's essentially because we've reduced the days needed to implement our product. So although overall revenues are growing, um, in fact the contribution from consulting is, is headed south, but that's a deliberate act. And today it's somewhere under 20% of our revenues. When you compare that with our competitors, they're somewhere between 45 and 55% is consulting. And that kind of indicates a trend for us. Um, so it's been overall uh, a good year. Um, it's, we're, we're heading on plan. Um, the only thing that we are kind of up on plan is profits. Um, although profits compared to last year are down, but that's a planned um, reduction. And the reason is we're investing in mm -hmm. basically our sales and marketing capability. So you'll notice in 2013, we greatly expanded the team in North America. Uh, and that's going to continue. They're now established, um, winning their first um, contracts, and that's going to continue. So we deliberately this year diluted profit performance uh, to make sure we started to scale the business and, and set the, 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 the path for, for next year and, and years to come. Okay. As you know, right now we're conducting uh, some research into CTRM in the cloud. Yep. And Aspect, of course, is one of the early uh, leaders, I would probably say, in delivering CTRM in the cloud environment. Yeah. How do you find uh, the industry accepting that particular model and what kind of pros and cons do you, do you experience in the sales process? Okay. Well, first of all, let me say that our company is now 13 years old and we've operated in the cloud for 13 of those years. We've, we've always been in the cloud. We were built for the internet economy. So we didn't have to take some technology and transfer it to cloud technology. We've always been there. And that gives, in itself gives us a great advantage above, above, above others that are moving into the cloud. In terms of advantages, um, it, it's all the usual things you expect with, with cloud applications. Um, clients do not need any hardware. More importantly, any people to look after, the, after that hardware or select it or maintain it. Um, and there's no software to install. So um, naturally, what that means is costs are vastly reduced. And we do, we do quite careful comparisons when, when our clients ask for a cost in the cloud versus not in the cloud. And over a three year period, um, if, if, a, if a, an installation, say, costs in the cloud um, $400,000, it will cost in, in excess of $500,000 by not doing it in the cloud. So there's clearly a cost advantage and total cost of ownership is, is one of the best that can be achieved. The other main thing is most of our clients are in the mid-market. Their job is trading. They do not have IT support and they certainly don't have large IT teams. So we allow them to concentrate on that while we concentrate on keeping that cloud floating even when it's changing. So to illustrate that, um, if you take the last time we had an outage that clients noticed was around six years ago. Uh, and it was down for a few hours and we, we moved over to our DR site. Has it been down since then? Yes. 
Did clients know? No. And that's because our ability to recover is as, as good as it could be. And that's because we're specialists in that. So even if you employ in-house, um, it's unlikely your technicians and capabilities will be up to the standard we have because that's our reputation at, at, at stake. And I can give you three illustrations of that in that we, um, we believe cloud is the way to go, but it's not a religion aspect. So if, if clients really want to go another way, we're happy to do that. And all the shades of gray between fully on-premise stuff and everything in between. Mm -hmm. Now, we have three clients that are not in our cloud. Um, all three are, are not in the cloud for policy reasons, not set by traders, not set by business users, but set by some, some other part of the organization. In those cases, one client looks after it entirely themselves and uh, frankly um, admits openly to me that they wish they hadn't. They left it in the cloud. The other two actually pay us extra money to look after their, their cloud, if you will, to make sure that we're applying the same disciplines that we do to our own, which is not possible internally. Again, we're experts in it. So I think those are the key advantages. What that means to a client is lower cost of ownership and massively quicker implementation. Mm -hmm. um, and again, our, our implementation, we typically quote, is between four and six weeks from ink to go live. And that's not based on hope. That's based on project experience of 30, 40, 50 projects. Okay. Um, when we talk about the cloud, perhaps maybe I'll just ask a quick question regarding uh, whether you mean that everybody's data is shared in one location and it's partitioned in some way, or whether we're talking about simply hosting each individual client on a separate server. Can you address that? Right. The, those two things are world apart, worlds apart. And in fact, many people used what you're describing as a managed service as the FUD, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt that makes the cloud cloudy. Um, so um, those things are very different because all you've got is somebody else managing the headache, but you're not going to get the scaling. Um, our application is truly multi-tenanted, multi mean, meaning, if you will, it's one hotel with many rooms. Mm -hmm. And you can have as many rooms as you like, and we keep extending it in that way, but it's all the same stuff. Um, and we maintain that remotely. The other thing is, um, just on the same topic, not quite answering your question, but slightly off, is this notion that if it is in the cloud, everybody gets the same thing. It's not quite true. Everybody gets the same benefits, but what you have turned on and don't turned on, and what differences you want to have, and integration to other systems, mm -hmm. is entirely up to that client. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. But managed service is a world apart because you're still incurring all those costs I mentioned earlier. It's just it's in somebody else's house. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a, a very big distinction between those two things. One of the examples is, uh, one of the great uh, additional benefits is this. We actually change our software 26 times a year. Now, some of those are minor releases. Some of them are, are pretty big releases. Um, three or four times a year, mm -hmm. they're major releases. We do that at the weekend, nobody notices the difference. Well, hopefully they don't know the, notice the difference in the new facilities, but we're, in, we're basically updating the software all the time. So when you ask for a new widget, and we make that new widget, you get it now, not in six months or 12 months time when the next major release of the software comes out, and it gets installed on your site and all those things you have to do. So there are significant differences and advantages in cloud versus managed service. But managed service is often used to confuse buyers. Very good. And thank you, uh, thank you for that explanation because I think that is one area of uh, cloudiness when we talk about CTRM in the cloud. Just one last quick question. As you know, uh, we're, we're, seeing, we're predicting uh, quite phenomenal growth for soft, uh, CTRM in the cloud. What kind of a, a year are you expecting uh, next year? For next year? Well, we are mid-planning, but let me give you some, some insight. Um, we do ex expect double-digit growth, and I know the figures that you're kind of um, expecting for next year. Um, as people um, more and more uptake um, cloud applications rather than traditional deployments. Um, but we're looking at figures in excess of that. So we would hope 20 to 30% growth in CTRM. 
Again, that doesn't won't be reflecting on our overall revenues because we've got two other revenue streams. Mm -hmm. We expect consulting to make less and less of a, a contribution mm -hmm. as we go forward to the point we'll never get to zero, but it will get lower and lower. Okay, well, that's all we've got time for today. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, very nice to see you again. Very nice to visit with you here in London. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you.